Hey everyone, the purpose of this video is to show you guys a diagram of the rock cycle and to also show you how easy it can be to actually diagram the rock cycle. Now, if I were to tell you to go look up the rock cycle on Google, you would find all different types of really complex cycles, but we can make it very simple and very easy to understand by using this diagram right here. So just as a little bit of a review, there are three types of rocks that make up the rock cycle. The first type is igneous rocks. And igneous rocks form from either lava or magma, which is just molten rock. And when that rock starts to heat up, it melts, it becomes lava or magma, and then eventually it will cool down. And once it's cooled down, you end up with your igneous rock. So the next type of rock that we're gonna talk about is sedimentary rocks. And sedimentary rocks form through the process wet CC. Weathering, which is the breaking up of rock. Erosion, which is the movement of those fragments or particles. Deposition, which is, or depositing, which is um, rocks, rock fragments, uh, depositing or ending up in certain locations, compaction, which means they get smushed together, and then lastly, cementation, where everything solidifies and you end up with your layered sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rocks form from sediment, which is rock pieces or fragments, or they can even form from pieces of sand. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. And there isn't an intermediate state for metamorphic rock, but um, when you have rocks that are inside the earth that undergo lots of heat and pressure through, which happens due to tectonic activity inside the earth, all of that heat and pressure then causes rocks to change and become something new. So an example that I talked about before is the Marcellus Shale, which is a type of rock shale is a type of sedimentary rock, but when it gets pushed inside the earth and undergoes heat and pressure, it becomes a new type of metamorphic rock known as slate. All right, so now that we've reviewed and went through some background information, let's start to take the words here and place them where they go on this diagram. So starting with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks, form through the process of melting and cooling. So anytime I see an arrow that goes to igneous rocks, what that tells me is melting and cooling had to happen. So let me move this one here. All right. So if I have a metamorphic rock that melts and then cools, it is going to become an igneous rock. And if I have a sedimentary rock that melts, and then cools, it is going to also become an igneous rock. And here's something else that we don't really think about. I can actually have an igneous rock that melts and then cools again and becomes a new igneous rock. Okay, And I'm just going to grab my magma and lava, which are my intermediates. So I'm going to move that over here. And what that means is that when melting and cooling, or when melting is happening, right, and before it's fully cool, cooled, then the state or the intermediate state that's going to be taking place is magma or lava. Right? Magma would be if it's forming, if that uh, molten rock is inside the earth, and lava is when that molten rock is outside the earth. So I'm also going to grab this magma and lava, and I'm going to move it to up here, which tells me that the intermediate state, or when I have an igneous rock that melts, it's magma and lava, and then it cools down and becomes an igneous rock again. And then finally, I'll move this one over here, right? Because if I have a sedimentary rock that melts, and becomes molten rock, it's either magma or lava, and then it cools down and it becomes that igneous. All right, so we're two thirds of the way done. The next one we'll talk about is sedimentary. And so sedimentary rocks, um, they have a specific process that forms them, 
which is known as this right here, red CC. So I can have an igneous rock that weathers and breaks apart and then erodes, deposits, and undergoes compaction and cementation and becomes a sedimentary rock. Right? The same thing can happen with a metamorphic rock. So if I have a metamorphic rock that breaks down and um, breaks into particle or small pieces, eventually it can become sedimentary. And then a sedimentary rock can also break apart and then become a new sedimentary rock. All right, so anytime I see an arrow going to sedimentary here and even here, that tells me the wed CC process happened. All right, so my intermediate states for sedimentary rocks is sediment. So what that means is sediment, right, in order for a sedimentary rock to be formed, those small particles as the sediment had to eventually compact and cement together to get that sedimentary rock. So sediment is going to be the intermediate state. So anytime I see red CC, sediment has to accompany it. And then lastly, because sedimentary rocks can break apart into sediment and become a new sedimentary rock, I put it right here with sedimentary rocks. And so my last type of rock that I'm going to talk about is metamorphic rock. And so metamorphic rocks are formed through the process of heat and pressure. Right? So I'm going to move this heat and pressure over here. Because if I have a rock that's igneous that undergoes large amounts of heat and pressure, it's going to become metamorphic. And if I have, well, before we start to talk about that, an example of an igneous rock becoming a metamorphic rock would be granite, which is igneous, which undergoes heat and pressure and becomes a new type of rock called gneiss or nice. All right, so sedimentary rocks can undergo heat and pressure and become metamorphic. And then lastly, I can have a metamorphic rock which can undergo heat and pressure and become a new metamorphic rock. And so slate then can become a new type of metamorphic rock called schist. And there you have it, the whole entire rock cycle diagram, all on one paper in this easy three-step rock cycle. And something that's really important for you to understand too, before we end this, is that there's no particular order for the rock cycle. So it doesn't have to go in a specific order. Everything can kind of jump around. So sedimentary rock become metamorphic, or it can become igneous, right? It doesn't have to go in this circular motion. Any rock can become another type of rock. All right, that's it. Thank you.